Do you guys hear that? Is that boss music? Go naked and just go with the sword and that's it. What do I do with all this? <laughs> it says it in the title. <laughs> Hello, wow. welcome to the Other Earthing Games podcast. <laughs> I am Jacob, the lead excavator on this expedition. Joining me are... I'm Erica. I'm Nick. And we dig games. <laughs> so, the basic deals of this podcast is every week we find a game that we, you know, that looks interesting to us and we're just like, hey, I want to play that. So we play it. And we come and we give our two cents about it. Uh, on top of that, we also find a board game that we all f- seem interested in and that we haven't played before, and we play that too. And we give our two cents on that. <laughs> but before we get into all that, how how have y'all been? What have y'all been up to? Erica. <laughs> on the spot. Uh, so we built a blanket fort this weekend. <laughs> Yeah, we wow. did. That was fun. <laughs> Straight back to fifth grade. Okay. It was fun, but also a nightmare. Because, I mean, I don't know if we've talked about it on here. We have two miniature schnauzers, and they really like to lay on blankets. So, oh, I know. <laughs> they thought that these sheets being propped up by, you know, fragile tripods and, you know, rubber bands, <laughs> they're like, this shouldn't be here. I'm supposed to lay on this. So, the fort might have gotten pulled down once by the pups and once by me. Um, wow. But that, that's, wow. a, that's beside the point. So. <laughs> oh, what else have you been up to, Erica? Uh, did I play anything fun? No. no. <laughs> I've been watching no. a lot of YouTube videos of people playing things, but I haven't personally played anything other than the game I'm going to talk about. <laughs> playing vicariously. Oh, well, no. No, that's a lie. I did play a little bit of uh, the Mario 64 on the Switch. The other the, the, the remake or the re-release. The, that's not even the remake. It's the re-release. That's <laughs> just as bad. Did they just not change anything? <laughs> it's still Exa- so yeah. janky. <laughs> so janky. yeah, they didn't change anything, and it's still like the little uh, square. So even on like our huge TV we have in the the upstairs just, living room, it's like it's just the square. It's a it's, square. It's a bit disappointing. Wonderful. It's standard definition. Oh, well. <laughs> Nick, you play anything fun? Um, I mean, I uh, I played the game I'm going to talk about. Uh, I've also I, I went back to RimWorld. I started one of those naked brutality runs. I, I my oh. save is entitled Naked and Afraid like the tv nice. show um <laughs> and it's actually going really well i've been playing with randy random and surprisingly he has only thrown like one sucker punch at me where it was a what do you want to call it a, a mech cluster uh other than that though uh, all i've been having to deal with is predators keep trying to eat my dogs which is awful <laughs> so like like the- that's also just because you play with so many mods though well no but even like even having like panthers and bears and stuff those are always because I always wind up landing in jungle environments. So the, the the wildlife are elephants and rhinos. Panthers aren't gonna hunt elephants and rhinos. So what do they pick? They're gonna hunt my huskies, or they're gonna hunt my my colonists. So <laughs> I always get a little ping that's like, you know, Panther two is hunting husky one, and it's like scramble the soldiers, no! everybody to arms. And so, <laughs> and of course, it's the naked brutality run. So you start with nothing. So I researched up to great bows, and great bows are amazing. So yeah. they have super long range. They actually deal a ton of damage. And my my starting dude, I, I rerolled him until he had a high shooting skill. So nice. So he can uh, he can actually <laughs> shoot pretty well. He can't do a lot else. The real challenge would be to just take whatever person it gives you to start with. The first one it gave this me had like a psychite addiction, year. and I was like, I'm not starting the game with psychite addiction on <laughs> naked and afraid. It's like, no. no you see, like, you see Erica, like my dude almost died way. from food poisoning. Like that's that's how bad that is, naked and afraid is. Yeah, that's not okay. Yeah, having having a colonist that has like is not good at anything in naked brutality is a death sentence. You, that colonist is going to die. Yeah. And you're going to be <laughs> stuck waiting for no, somebody you, to stumble when, upon When everyone's dead, you start over. Die. You don't That's wait. That's just it. <laughs> no, I had a... Mm, 
Not if you get a really good map. That's <laughs> right. You, you, get, you, you get the on. best darn spawn, and you're like, not giving no. this up, not doing it. To hell, to hell with that, Colin, as he was useless. I'll wait for somebody better. <laughs> um, but other than RimWorld, though, I've been um, exploring Game Pass, trying to find um, just to see how Game Pass works. It's really neat. I really like the. Um, it, it's still in beta, but the Game Pass thing works where you can download like the xbox app on your pc and mm -hmm. and download games on your xbox and so it it cloud saves the files together and so i've been tinkering with that the game i, I played this week uh, that i'm gonna talk about i did a lot of that where you know if erica was watching tv or something and i wanted to play this i'd go and play it on my computer and it would just take like a second it'd be like all right sync and cloud save bam Have fun. and it was really nice like i said the, the pc yeah. thing is Nick still doesn't in beta. like spending time with me we'll don't, go to the other room don't be like that <laughs> When you're watching, when you're this watching weekend, air disasters the house with the dogs, when you're watching air disasters, <laughs> I, I, I want to go do something else. I don't want to listen to how, you know, 30 years ago, 80 people died in a plane crash in Albany. You know, it's like, I don't want to hear that. <laughs> I really don't want to hear that. And it's like, and it all had it's to do with pilot air. It's not about them dying. It's about why it happened. And it's 90% of the time. It's because these pilots who are super trained screwed up. It's like, I don't want to hear no. that if I'm ever going to fly again. No. I don't want to. A I lot of the make times mistakes. it's like. Bad maintenance issues. <laughs> well, again, somebody, somebody else right? did something wrong, and I'm gonna die for no reason. <laughs> oh, I think you're not you're not helping Nick's fear of planes at all. No. So, but. so if she's watching, you know, air disasters or was it cold cases or whatever, I I don't want to. Like, I sat and listened to that one with you, and what was it where like the the girl was abducted by her uncle or something like that, and no one knew that that really oh, yeah. that really like made me nauseous and i was like i don't want to i don't want to watch this yeah and so Ooh. so if eric is watching murder <laughs> shows and death shows I, I i go do something else and Fun. yeah nice but we did try to well, watch well no this was a long time ago we did try to watch what was it tiger king but but as soon no, as the pups you saw, did not try to watch that i tried to watch that one night when you were playing video games and then it started coming on and there's like a whole bunch of tigers attacking each other and kiora was one of our dogs kiora was just sitting there like oh, i'm so interested in this and i was like no cover your eyes and i couldn't watch it <laughs> she was traumatizing our children our children but oh, man. <laughs> all right so uh, enough about us jacob what have, what have you been up to this week uh, so I've recently gotten back into Battlefield 4. Wow. Which is a really old game in video game standards. But hey, it was $8 on Steam and I got all the DLC, so I was really happy. Oh, I mean, 8 bucks oh, wow. for a game and DLC, that's, you can't pass that That's out. pretty good. It was great. Yeah. I got it, I got it on sale and I, I remember it because me and my friends from high school had so much fun in the multiplayer. We would, uh, we would just hop in a game and just... Just mess around. It was wonderful. Have a, have a good time. <laughs> is, and I do the same thing now. Is that the one that you like had some YouTube videos of? Yes. I remember I, I remember that, watching that you is... and your you and the, 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 the shenanigans that you and your friends and you you did a pretty good job of like having the the, the, the audio the the voice. You had you had the subtitles pop up on the screen basically. I thought you did a pretty good job of that. Mm. But Oh yes. I was very I was very inspired by Soviet Womble and Russian Badger and the way they do their things. But to say, Womble, yes, how, how recorded, could you not be inspired by Womble? <laughs> right, he's a wonderful British man. <laughs> but no, I've been playing that a lot. I got one of my coworkers into it, so I play with him every so often. And okay. uh But yeah, I've been I've just been enthralled by it some more. So it's great. And also I've I've been playing the game I'm gonna talk about. Okay. Awesome. But yeah. So all right. Well, now that our now that our private endeavors have been covered, Nick, <laughs> how what game did you pick to play this week? Uh, okay. Yeah. So uh, the game that I played this week is called Spiritfarer. It, 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 yeah, Spiritfarer. It's kind of hard for me to say it, <laughs> but uh, it's by Thunder Lotus Games. So I thought it was pretty cool. I played some games by these guys before, and that's how I, I heard about this one. It only came out. Uh, earlier this year, I think. So, it looked really great. Uh, on Steam, the game is classified as a building management adventure indie funny game. I, I've, I've never seen the tag funny before on something on Steam, but uh, <laughs> but it had the tag funny. So, I thought that was interesting. So, 
The premise of the game is that uh, Charon, the uh, the ferryman for the underworld, you know, he takes people from the, the land of the living to the land of the dead, is mm -hmm. retiring. And you play his replacement, who is this uh, this little girl that um, I, I guess she died. Um, yeah, her name is Stella. And she has like this big star shaped hat, you know, that's like her signature look, I guess. I don't know. Other than that, she's just because Stella, you know, star and her Stella. <laughs> okay. Stella means star, doesn't Does it? it? And like Italian. I, I have no idea, but if it does, that totally makes sense. But it's it, it's like a like if you look up that name on like baby name lookup dictionary thing, whatever it's called, <laughs> it'll say a star or something like that. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, so she has a giant star shaped hat. I have no idea what her credentials are. Like, why did why did Charon pick her? You know, to take over the mm -hmm. the ferrying the ferry business. <laughs> But but in real life, she was a toll booth operator. <laughs> He's like, you're perfect. <laughs> Maybe she operated gondolas or something like that. Who knows? But she, yeah, so, so she got picked to take over the the, fair, the the spirit ferrying business. And so the the whole premise of the game is you you have this boat that operates as your base. You can build different buildings and stuff there. And it has a, a big world map and you can sail around and there's a bunch of islands, right? I guess this is areas like Purgatory or Limbo or something where everyone in this world is dead, but they are not ready to pass over, I guess, you know, cross over to the other side. Mm -hmm. um, and so your whole mission is to go to these different islands and find spirits that are kind of ready to go, but not fully ready to go. And so they're like, oh, of course, <laughs> I'll, I'll come live on your boat, you know. But it's not like, oh, take me to the afterlife. It's I'll live on your boat for a while. So you like have whenever you pick up spirits, you have to make them a house you have to build yourself a kitchen so you can make them food. Um, and uh, a <laughs> as you pick up more and more crew members, their needs start to get more and more elaborate. Like one of the first people you get, uh, her whole thing is like, oh, I uh, I don't eat fruit. I'm sorry. I I've never, never liked this stuff. But she loves <laughs> coffee. So you grow coffee beans and she's and she like, like it actually was really surprising that this is like a cartoony kind of game, but they swear and stuff like that. Like, like she'll, she'll like at one, at one point she actually she totally dropped an f bomb and she's like, "This is the best effing bowl of popcorn I've ever had." And I'm like, "Well, that was unexpected in this little cartoon <laughs> game." Like I kind of half expected this to be family friendly, but no, it's not. Um, and it's pretty neat. So a as you go about, you pick up all these spirits. You have to meet their needs. You develop a, a relationship with them. So you you talk to them all, and over periods of time, they start to kind of reveal aspects of them to you. And it, to me, it seemed like all of them had some sort of bond to Stella back when she was alive. Like, I, I know I know one dude was like her uncle. I'm not sure what the rest of them are to her, but they all seem to know her. But like, but one <laughs> dude uh, was, was her uncle and he was my favorite guy because he ate anything. He was the easiest to please <laughs> with food. I could I could give him fruit. I could give him coffee. I could, the only thing he wouldn't take was when you botch a meal and it's like, you know, disgusting food. He wouldn't eat that. He's like, come on, kiddo. You're better than this. Um, even he has standards. Even he's got standards, but, <laughs> but he would eat everything. And so I loved that about him. Everyone else was super picky. Um, but it was it was neat. And so you develop your relationships, you improve their mood. Uh, you go on little adventures, you find all these different areas. Uh, and yeah, and so like the long term goal is to take them to the afterlife. So. In this game, that means you take them to a place called the Everdoor, which is like a like I said, it's it's the gate beyond. So and as you develop relationships with these people, they'll tell you when they're ready to go. And usually it's at the climax of some story with them. Like uh, one, one example is there's a uh, two of these spirits that you wind up finding that are, I guess, an estranged married couple. Uh, like you find them both at separate times and you find the wife first and she wants you to go and find her husband, you know, at some point. At first, she doesn't care about him uh, <laughs> and she wants you to go find him. And, you know, he's he's a bum that I guess in their in their life, he, you know, was, you know, cheating on her and stuff like that. And <laughs> you go and you find him in the afterlife and his whole story, it's building up where he's acting like he wants to make it up to her. You know, he wants to. Yeah, here you're getting him like a bouquet of flowers and chocolates and all these things where he's preparing like this big romantic date for her. 
you know? And the climax of his story is like, psych, it was for another woman. And so, and like, and like literally <laughs> right after place. that, and you find out what he did, he's like, okay, kid, I'm ready to go to the Everdoor. And it's like, really, dude? Like, that's it? Like, that's, I had faith in you. Well, maybe she was his true love. Wait, like, like, the wife that's on my boat was his true love, or the woman that he like no, had the, a super the, date the for? No, the other girl that he, the, yeah, the other girl that he he threw the the night for. I don't know, yeah. I don't know, but don't know. but that's that's <laughs> one of the examples. A lot of the other a lot of the other characters had way more interesting and in depth stories that all had really like <laughs> interesting ways to go about it. I uh my my th- that was my probably my least favorite group out of the two of them was the the married couple <laughs> I, I would say their their characters probably had the least depth um but there's a whole bunch of different spirits you get as you ferry um as you ferry a number of, each time you take one across you get a flower that that like it spawns in their house so you you can never get rid of their houses even after they're gone through the door um but when you <laughs> take them through the door you go back to their house and there is a spirit flower there and the spirit flower is kind of this currency you have to take back to the the boat builder, the shipwright. And that's how you wind up getting upgrades for your boat that'll let you get through different areas. So like the first barrier you hit is like a an ice wall, right? Or it's like a like a like a like icebergs and stuff like that. So he makes you mm-hmm. like an ice plow for your boat. But you have to have X mm-hmm. amount of spirit flowers to go through it, you know? I was gonna say, can you just be like, no, you're not going. You don't deserve to go. <laughs> <laughs> I actually kind of wondered about that because, like, at one point near near the end, which I did actually finish the game, it was it's it was fantastic. Um, one point near the end, I think I had like four different spirits on my boat at once that were all like, "I'm ready to go to the Everdoor. Let's go now." And I'm like, <laughs> in a minute, I'm busy. You know, <laughs> I'm doing other stuff. I got things to do. So by the end, I was practically like, uh, was it Davy Jones from the Pirates of the Caribbean movies where it's like, I know I'm supposed to be ferrying dead people, but I'd rather do something else. Um, <laughs> but it was it was really interesting. Like it as you build more and more stuff for your boat, you wind up making a bunch of different like workshops, basically. And so it's a whole bunch of little mini games in a bigger game. And I don't know why, but I've always loved I've loved games that um that are comprised of a bunch of mini games that kind of fit into a bigger arc. Like it makes me think back to like a, like Fable 2 where you would get like jobs and the job was like be the bartender, go chop wood, be a blacksmith. <laughs> and it was always those goofy little mini games where it's like, you know, as the bartender, it's fill the beer throw, fill the beer throw, fill the beer throw, and it's all about timing, you know? And it's it's just a simple goofy thing. And that's how it was for this with the like there's a room called the the loom or yeah the, the I think it was the loom and so you would get fiber and you would weave it into string and then fabric and it was all about hold the button till till you hit the mark and then bam you know make the make the cloth bam cloth bam cloth and it <laughs> is this a goofy little mini game but it was it was always so fun the hardest one for me was the the wood chopping one because it's you're guiding it's like you're you're taking logs and cutting them into planks and the log is coming across and it has like a dotted line through it. But it's like this curvy zigzag line and you have to make sure you keep the blade with the with the dotted line <laughs> and with the controller because I was playing this on controller. Gosh, that was so hard. You had you had no precision movement at all. <laughs> but but yeah, so I I honestly I really enjoyed it. It was a very a very fun experience. I, I don't know if it has a lot of replayability for me. Like it did have a lot okay. of stuff to do, but to me, this game seems like it wants to tell a story. And I, I don't know, like for me, it seems like a lot of games, if they're so story driven, it, it almost feels like once you know the ending, you're kind of like, well, do I want to go listen to that story again? And there's nothing you can do during the game to change the way the story goes. I don't know. I might have to. I might have to go look up some stuff online. You know, uh, I I tried my hardest to go without having to Google stuff for this game. But at (laughs) one point I hit a brick wall where the the one dude wanted fried chicken. And all the cook, all the cooking (laughs) is 
take X ingredient and X ingredient and throw it in the oven and hope it makes something. And so I finally got chicken and I put chicken in there with everything I could find and nothing made fried chicken. Nothing. What made the fried chicken? I had to have fat, which I had no idea how to make. I, I had no idea how to how to make sense, or get though. fat. I mean, it does when you say it. So like, <laughs> I, I, I looked all over the world to find fat everywhere that I could go. And so finally, I had to Google how to make fat. And I, <laughs> I was very sad. I tried so hard. I didn't want to Google things. And then... Well, if you just sit on the couch for months at a time eating nothing but junk food, I mean, <laughs> that should be pretty easy, right? <laughs> well, yeah. So, like I said, I, I feel like maybe I ought to go back and give it another try. Like, maybe give it some time. Like, pick it back up next year, you know, and, and try it again. And see mm-hmm. if if I could actually create different outcomes. But it's a very, yeah. it seems like a very emotionally charged kind of game. Because, like, it very much encourages you to talk to these these passengers and get to know them and learn their stories. And for me, the biggest thing was I felt kind of like playing a detective. Like, I wanted to figure out what their bond to Stella <laughs> was. Like, the one guy made it easy. Like, he straight up tells you he's your uncle. And you're like, oh, okay, that's simple. But everybody else, it was <laughs> it wasn't so cut and dry. And so I thought that was a really interesting aspect of the game. But... Wasn't there something weird with the uncle, though? Like, you don't take him to the door or something? Yeah, that that was one thing that I I kind of... I guess it was a gripe I had with the game, was that it did seem like... Because, like, that happened. Like, when it, when it came time for him to be ready to go to the door, he just disappeared instead of having you take him to the door. And I never found out why. And so we had to go and Google it. And it turned out, like, if you were a premium Kickstarter for this game... You got some story art book that gave you the backstory to the game. And I was like, that's not (laughs) cool. Like, if there's actual parts of this story that are missing because I didn't know you were a Kickstarter and I didn't go and give you a hundred dollars, you know, and so now you're going to deny me parts of the story for a story driven game. So that Mm -hmm. that put a little bit of a sour taste in my mouth, but from what I could see, he was the like the biggest red flag about just glaring holes in the story. There were other mm-hmm. ones that I'll admit, as I got later in the game, I got a bit lazy where I just didn't want to talk to them anymore. I wanted to go do other stuff. <laughs> I wanted to go. Buy, You're not as important. I wanted to go do blacksmithing and stuff like that. <laughs> like, like I said, the very last passenger I picked up, I had no interest in them at all. <laughs> I think they were a teacher. Uh, that's all I know. I, I don't know. I didn't want to talk to them. They were like very, they like stuck their nose up at every food, every piece of food I gave them. And I was like, you're way too picky for me and way too stuck up. I don't, I don't have the time of day for you. Like I said. So you mentioned you have to feed them. What if you don't feed them? I don't know. I know that, I know that they'll, I know that after a while they'll, they, they start pestering you constantly. Like, uh, but I never let them get totally I, I never just let them go extended periods without food like whenever you click on I mean, each character they can't die well yeah i mean they're already <laughs> dead right so i don't know i don't know what happens if you just don't feed them i mean their mood goes down because a lot of them you uh if you keep their mood high they'll do stuff for you so like the uncle if you keep him in a high mood he gives you wood planks randomly based on whatever area that mm-hmm. you're in so you know, like he might give you maple planks or oak planks or whatever. And then like uh, the wife in the estranged married couple, she, I guess, was a miner in her life before. So she'll bring you ores. And it's like, cool. So silver ore, iron ore. Awesome. And so they would all they would all do different things depending upon like if their mood was high. I'm guessing the only mm-hmm. cost of not feeding them is that they don't do stuff for you. I'm guessing. Um, yeah, I know every character when you clip click clip when you clip on them when you click on them they would have a uh like a little circle that was like options to do like talk uh feed give them items stuff like that and the food one always would change based on how how frequently you've fed them it was an apple and so like if it's been a little bit the apple would have one bite taken out of it and if it's been a while (laughs) it would just be an apple core you know and so other than that changing, I don't I didn't really see any kind of impact of not feeding them. That's interesting. Other than they would start talking to you without you clicking on them. 
Maybe like, hey there, kiddo. It's been a while uh, since I've had a bite. Think you can help me out? I'm, I'm... <laughs> Make your own food, freeloader. <laughs> I like, feel the might peckish. You think you can go whip up some fried chicken for me? <laughs> some dumplings while you're at it. And don't forget my two liter Coke. You know? <laughs> yeah, basically they they're like the worst house guests you could ever have. Basically. I don't know. No, they were actually all really interesting people. So I, I really enjoyed it. I did. Like I said, it, it did seem like there were some glaring holes in the story. But mm. but all in all, in spite of the holes, it still seemed like it was a good, coherent story. There wasn't like there wasn't a ton of those glaring like, well, why did that happen? Situations. Yeah. The uncle was the biggest one. And so so I really liked it. Like I said, it definitely something I would recommend for people to play if you're looking for something that's it's a management sort of game. You know, you're constantly like growing food. <laughs> You know, making buildings, harvesting resources. It's a, it's a little harvesty management type of game. So I would totally recommend it. I would. I really enjoyed it. It had a cute soundtrack. The mini games were fun. Fishing, while it was awesome, it was frustrating, but fun. Um, <laughs> I'd really recommend it. Like I said, I, I would definitely go back and play it out. Um, play, play it again. Like I said, I'll probably have to go and Google if there's alternate endings. Because if there are all if there mm-hmm. are alternate endings, maybe I could get a better one. I don't know. Um, so yeah, so that was Spirit <laughs> Fair by uh, by Thunder Lotus Games. Cool, Erica. What you have? So this week I played The Long Dark, and that's by Hinterland Studio, Inc. <laughs> that's the developer and publisher. And on Steam, their tags are Open World Survival Craft. That's all one tag. Survival <laughs> and open world. <laughs> so so w- one whole tag is open world survival craft. Yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what a mouthful. So The Long Dark. I think this was a game that went through the stages of being like early access and then finally got its release kind of thing. So the release date on this is August 1st, 2017. So it's been out for a while now. But... There are different modes in this game. So there's a story mode where you can play through a story or there's just survival where so the where you just try to survive. And the premise of the game is that you are flying an airplane to some very remote part of the world and something happens that So it says that there's a geomagnetic disaster. So I'm not too sure what that would mean, but in the (laughs) game, it's always snowing. Like you're, you're in perpetual winter. And so the whole survival bit is surviving in the cold. You can freeze you if you get hurt. Like it's, it's very brutal. So I started playing this game and I decided I wanted to do the story since I'm not really, I mean... I didn't know about the game a lot, and I didn't want to just go into survival mode because that Mm -hmm. doesn't seem very fun. Uh, (laughs) So I went into the story mode, and they have three options for the difficulty. So you can choose the easiest one where it's easy on you. Then there's the middle for, you know, just general people that play video games every so often. And then there's, like, the experienced one where it's, like, very brutal. And I was like, well, I've played video games. I'll just go with the middle choice. And that was a horrible decision. (laughs) (laughs) So in the story mode, you start out and you're flying this plane with this lady. So you're a guy. You're like this older guy that when you first start out, you start out in like some airplane hangar in the middle of some winter storm. And you're looking around and you find a picture of like you, your dad and your brother next to your plane. And it's a little prop plane, like it's only like a two person plane thing. And then you also find a picture of you as like a doctor. And when you look at that picture, the guy says like, oh, the good old days. So I'm assuming at some point you were a doctor. Well, then this lady, sh- no, the phone starts ringing and you answer the phone and it's like the, I don't know, director of the airport or someone of that nature. That's like. I told her not to come, you know, you can't fly in this weather, but she's insistent and whatever, whatever. And then this lady shows up 
and you guys have a history, and it seems like you were married before, but you're not anymore, obviously, because you're living alone in this airplane hangar in the middle of winter. Etern- eternal winter somewhere up north. <laughs> but so she's insistent that you fly her to this remote remote town up north on some island, supposedly, because they need help. That Like, she's a doctor, and she has this briefcase, and she needs to go there and help people. But she won't say why or what's going on or anything like that, or what's in the case. Very suspicious, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> what's in the box? So you get in the plane, and you start flying her over there, and I guess this is when the geomagnetic disaster happens, because, like... You're flying north, and you can see the northern lights, and then all of a sudden they get super bright, and everything starts shaking, and your plane, all of the electrical systems go out. So your plane crashes. And the next thing you would know, you just wake up in, like, a fiery, snowy field, if that makes sense, on the side of a (laughs) mountain, and he's just like, I need to get out of here. And so when I first started playing this on, you know, the, me- the the medium difficulty, I was like, okay, that means I need to get out of this hole as fast as possible. So I was walking around trying to find a way out, and then I, like, basically died of hypothermia. Because apparently, even though he said, I need to find a way out of here as, fo- as soon as possible, he doesn't mean as soon as possible. He means after he had a nap <laughs> and wakes up in the morning. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense to me, but... <laughs> So I went back and I started the game on easy so that I could actually survive. Um, and so it's my, my, my dislikes of this game. So this has very, very positive reviews on Steam. Um, but my dislikes of this game is that it doesn't tell you how anything works. Like... I played on controller and so yeah, like obviously A to interact with things you know mm-hmm. things something like that's like the only intuitive thing use the joystick to walk and move the camera and a interacts with things like you pick up sticks and you pick up pieces of cloth and wood from the wreckage and stuff like that but it doesn't tell you anything about like crafting or just how your menus work in general it just throws you into the game and so he was like, oh, I'm so cold. And I'm standing next to, you know, burning wreckage of a plane, which you would think would be enough to keep you warm because jet fuel, I'm sure, burns very hot. <laughs> no, it's not It's not enough. You have to go into a cave and build a little campfire. But it doesn't tell you, like, how to build the campfire. So I'm standing there in the cave like, okay, this is a good place to build a fire, right? And it's in the cave. It'll be warm. And I'm trying, I'm hitting all the buttons and I can't figure out like how to craft a campfire. Mm -hmm. And it turns out like you have to hit Y or X or something. And then a little radial menu will come up. And then you go over to like it has different options. There's like water, food, light sources, um, sleeping, and like campfires and stuff. And so that's how you build your fire. But it doesn't tell you anything as far as like how to get to those menus or what you need to build the things until you try to build it and it's like you don't have enough sticks and so you have to go out into the snow and cold and find more sticks and to me that was annoying (laughs) i think that's a big deal in survival craft games that it it, there's very little hand holding and it's a lot of for you to, to figure out how to do this stuff on your own Mm-hmm. And like what you need to do to do certain things to craft certain things, I think that's a, I think that's a big deal in home in uh, survival craft games like that. Just like figure it out. I type don't know. Of thing. I mean, yeah. to me, like I, I, I've talked about it before. I, I've played a lot of like Souls games, you know, and they're known for not holding your hand. But in the starting area, it still had little little tool tips that are like, hey man, right bumper to swing your sword. You know, beat a beat a roll. <laughs> it's like. Yeah, it's not holding my hand, but it's like, here's how you actually play, you know? Like, I, I understand, like, a game not uh, not teaching you, like, the nuance, you know? Like, like how, like, when you play RimWorld, it doesn't teach you all the nitty-gritty, like, details. It just tells you, like, the basic things. Like, you know, 
hit the build menu to build structures and hit uh, schedule to schedule your people. It doesn't go into all the detail about like properly utilizing your time schedules and stuff like that, you know, <laughs> like, I don't know. So if it's like if the whole game is based around like collecting resources and crafting stuff, like it should at least say like hit X to open your craft menu or something, you know, or or you could just stand here and die of hypothermia. <laughs> that was an option. I mean, just give in. You didn't want to play this game anyway. It's like just freeze, just freeze. So, like, the only tooltip it gave me was, so, you know, you sleep, and then the next morning, it's like, okay, now I have to find a way out of here. It's like, yeah, that makes a lot more sense now that I can see, you know, in the daytime. So, you find a way out of this this hole in the ground, and you you go up to the top, and you find your plane. Apparently, you weren't wearing your seatbelt, and so you went straight out the windshield, but still survived rookie, somehow. Rookie mistake. <laughs> rookie mistake. <laughs> Um, but the the lady you were flying, who may or may not have been your wife, she's <laughs> gone. But she left her case behind and her backpack. So she just literally took off running without anything. Um, so you find her stuff and you pick it up and you're like, okay, I'll take this. Um, and you you start walking because it's it as far as I've seen, because I haven't finished this game. As far as I've seen, this game is pretty linear. I mean, at least the story mode, which makes sense. It's a story. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like, walk down this way. There's only one way to progress type of thing. There's not like multiple. It's not like an open world kind of thing. Okay. So I'm walking through and I get to this clearing. And as I'm entering the clearing, it like one tool tip came up and was like, you should, you should throw rocks at rabbits so that you you know you can eat them like that'll that's the way to get food is you throw <laughs> pebbles at rabbits and the targeting mechanism in this game is horrible uh -huh. <laughs> like the guy he just puts one of his hands up like like he's like i don't know like he throws one hand up and then he throws the rock with the other hand but like you would think that the left hand that he puts up in front of you is the targeting reticle, right? Like maybe the like where the thumb meets your 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 hand or maybe the tip of your thumb or something. No. There there's no like there's <laughs> there's from what I could tell there was nothing that was like this is the targeting thing. Like if you get the rabbit in this crosshair, you're going to hit him with the rock. So I was just standing there throwing pebbles at bunnies and then every time he throws it, he's like ah! And so then all the rabbits get scared and they run away. <laughs> it's like it'd be a little stealthy. Wait, are please, we are we talking no, like he, a he, like a like Maria Sharapova grunt? You know, where like whenever she hits the ball, it's like, <laughs> Gah! Gah! like is that yeah. him throwing a rock? Yeah, and it's a tiny pebble. Like it's it's smaller than the palm of his hand, and he's gonna try to knock a bunny out with this, and he's <laughs> yelling as he's I'm doing it. Like, cause, like an avalanche or something. You know, if you're up in the snowy <laughs> mountains, it's like you throw a pebble. Oh, you died to an avalanche. Sorry. Turns out you weren't supposed to throw at these bunnies. <laughs> oh, goodness. So I was just like, screw it. I'm not stopping at the bunnies. I'm just walking through. I'm going to make it to some kind of civilization. There has to be something out here. That I mean, I was flying out here for a reason, right? So I keep going and you you go you walk into another little clearing and there's a wolf eating a bunny and you're like, "Wow, I wish I was that wolf right now." But you're just like, <laughs> "Oh, maybe I should stay away from that wolf. Maybe if I'm I stay far away from it, it won't see me." <laughs> like, "Okay." <laughs> yeah, he's going to catch a bunny, but he's not going to notice, you know, a 6-foot guy tromping through the snow. <laughs> no matter how far away you are, he's going to see you. <laughs> Um, so you sneak around this wolf some, you know, magic way, and you, you see a radio tower in the distance, and you walk over to the radio tower, and from that perch up in the mountain, you can see a town down below, and there's a house, and it's got smoke coming out of the chimney. And you go into this town, and you find this old lady, and she's blind, and she's sitting there with a shotgun, and she almost shoots you as soon as you talk to her, but she's just like... She's the only survivor left in this town. And basically, this is as far as I got. Because when you talk to this lady, you're you're asking about your friend, the, the lady that went missing from the airplane. And you're asking if she knows anything. And the blind lady is like, yeah, well, maybe I can 
think about it and maybe I know something. But the, you know, the bad guys came through here and they took everything. I need food and I need wood because I'm blind and I can't survive on my own. So <laughs> go bring me wood and food and maybe I, m maybe then I can think about your friend. So it's like, <laughs> like, you know. If you give me 20 bucks, maybe I'll remember better kind of thing. <laughs> that seems like a band-aid on a bad situation. So, I mean, if she's a blind lady yeah. that can't survive on her own, on her own in the mm -hmm. wilderness, mm -hmm. she's like, bring me some yeah. food so I don't die. But like in a month when I eat all this, I'm going to die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I don't understand. And so you go through town. And it's all these houses that they're all like log cabins and they're all like torn down or just completely abandoned and they're just super tiny and there's like one granola bar in this house and you go over to the next house and there's like a bottle of water and you go over to the next house and it's like, eh, here's a soda. And so like trying to find all the food that this lady wants because she has she gives you like, get me X amount of food. The amount that you need for this lady is so much. Like, there's... And you have to eat, too, because you have to survive, and you get hungry and thirsty as you're running around town trying to find all this food for her. And it's just... I don't know. It just didn't seem worth it. And then I couldn't find enough wood, even though this was a lumber town. I couldn't find a hatchet to save my life. I think at the very end, before I give up, I finally found the stupid hatchet. But, like... How am I supposed to get wood? And I, I went and there was a gas station in town and I could find I found a whole bunch of like pallets, like wooden pallets. And I was like, cool, I can break these down because you can break materials down into their components so that you have resources. Mm -hmm. And it was like, I need a hatchet to break down these pallets. And I was like, oh, OK, let me go find a hatchet in this like huge, like it's just needlessly big this area where the town is and it's just all snow and you walk around for a few hours and it's like oh i'm freezing i'm gonna die and it's just like let me go build a campfire real quick so i don't die out here <laughs> like and this is on like the easy mode i can't even imagine what it would be like if you played on the actual survival mode like you'd have to know where the stuff was to get it and get back with enough time and not get hypothermia mm -hmm. like you'd, you'd have to have like memorize the map so you know where where to get the hatchet where to get the sodas where to get the how to throw rocks at rabbits i, I don't know <laughs> yeah and like the wolves so in the easiest mode i was playing they don't attack you but in the other two level the other two modes they attack you and there's wolves wandering all around town so like, <laughs> it seems pretty impossible to me. And part of me was thinking, like, can I just leave and not do this, you know, fetch quest? Can I just leave her here to die and just keep walking out in the middle of nowhere like I did with the bunnies? Like, screw the bunnies. Let's keep going kind of thing. I don't know. I, that's where I stopped because it was taking me forever to to find anything. And like I said, this this place is so so big and there's so many different areas like i was wandering around because i found a clue in some truck so there's also vehicles just everywhere that you can search but mm -hmm. you have to enter the vehicle which is a loading screen then when you're in the vehicle search the glove box and to do any task you have to press and hold the button for like five seconds for it to search or open a door or just anything so you sit there and it's like, oh, the glove box is empty. And you exit the truck and it's another loading bit. And then you're outside. And there's like 20 vehicles in this town. <laughs> and you can get in the back seat of the cars. So if you're thinking about front seat and back seat and searching the trunk of the cars, that's a lot of time. <laughs> and like in one of the cars, I did find a note that was like two lovers that were like, Oh, we need to get out of town. I'm going to hide a cache of of survival food, whatever, at the place where we always watch the stars. And it's like, well, that's helpful. Like, how do I know where you went to go watch the stars? <laughs> and the town is... And so I was just wandering around all the edge of the town. 
And I ended up finding like a tunnel that went into the mountain and there was like a bus crashed. Like there was an avalanche that made this bus crash basically. And I was like, oh no, a school bus. And then I walk up to it and it's like, location discovered, prison bus crash. And I was like, well, that feels safe. (laughs) And there's like a dead prisoner just laying there in the snow. And I was just like, yeah, that's scary. (laughs) Because there is one other guy that I've seen, and he's in the gas station, and he's just sitting there in the gas station. And you can steal all the food that's in the gas station. He doesn't care. But, like, is he one of the prisoners? You know? Is he going to kill me, one of these? I, I don't know. Did you, did you, did you do, like, the, <laughs> I need to play uh, the more Oblivion of it, style thing? But for thing, now, I'm just frustrated. Where you walk into someone's house, what? and you pick up every item but- that they own in their house. <laughs> did you do that <laughs> to the dude? Well, just most of the beef jerky. The lady needs food. Where am I supposed to find it? You're robbing Peter to pay Paul. I mean, mean, he didn't say anything. At first, I didn't because I was like, well, what if he attacks me? Like, I don't don't know how to fight. I can't even throw a rock at a bunny. How am I supposed to protect myself here? But, um... But yeah, then he didn't react when I took something, and I was like, oh, okay, well, I'll just take all the crackers off the shelf, sure. <laughs> like, the old lady needs some food. But um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'll have to give it another shot. I, like I said, I just got extremely frustrated where I was at, and it didn't seem like there was any progress going. I was just in this town trying to find food and trying to find wood, and the food wasn't even all good food. Because I would find food and be like, oh, I'm hungry. Let me eat this granola bar. And then it's like, you have food poisoning. And I'm like, damn it, it's a granola bar. It can't be that hard. But no, food poisoning. And then you have to find medicine to cure your food poisoning. Or else you continually take damage until you die from food poisoning. <laughs> it's not fun. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's disappointing to hear. Because I, I remember hearing, I like you, you said this game has a lot of positive reviews, right? Like I've... I've never played it, but like mm-hmm. I've heard a lot of people praise this game. And I remember it it was an early access game. Because I remember <clears throat> years ago watching Sips play it. And Sips was mm-hmm. playing it when it was on early access. I don't think it had a story mode when he played. I think it was yeah. just a sandbox survival mode. And Sips did the whole Sips thing. You know, when, when things go wrong, he starts screaming at the game. And, um, you know, in, in a funny Sips fashion, it's not like like mm-hmm. rage mode where he throws the controller across the room. It's more of the. So not like because <laughs> <laughs> I was very but, yeah, I remember watching it. And I think I think Sips spent a lot of time yelling at this game because he'd be like, come on, where's the hatchet or something like that. He was always looking for something like, where's this? Yeah. And and yeah, so I, I think you're probably not alone in that frustration, but like. It makes me wonder, Everyone like, what are you it. missing that all these other people these obviously others. got? You know, they're yeah. like, oh, this game is wonderful. I just or, games. <laughs> or or nobody got past that section and they all just gave it good reviews to pretend they did. You know, like when you're in that group of friends and they all know what happened and you're like, oh, yeah, <laughs> totally. I was. Yeah, that was a great party. Right. Ha ha ha. You don't know. You have no idea what, what happened. You know, you don't know what's going on. Yeah. So all those all those positive reviews are just people lying. They're like, I totally beat the game. But yeah, totally. it's got what? 60. It's got 60,000 reviews. Oh and of all reviews, it's rated very positive. 60,000 reviews. Wow. So like it has to be doing something right. And I, I mean, <laughs> I probably just really suck at this game. <laughs> okay, so maybe maybe worth giving it another shot. Yeah. Okay. And that was The Long yeah. Dark, right? Yeah, that was The Long Dark uh, by Hinterland Studio. And like I said, I, I bought it on Steam a while ago. It's $30 on Steam, so... <laughs> yeah. Hmm. yeah sounds, sounds really cool. Well, sounds really neat. Uh, I guess my the game I picked for this week was a game that I saw just on a whim. It popped up on my on my store page in Steam, and I was like, "Wow, this really fits the the criteria of what we really want to be talking about." And it's called Dreamscaper, and it's 
So it is by the developers Afterburner Studios, published by Freedom Games and Maple Whispering Limited. Uh, I checked both of the, yeah, I checked both of their things. Freedom Games has only published this game, Dream Dreamscaper. Okay. And uh, it is its tags are roguelike or roguelike action roguelike permadeath action. From playing it, I don't know about the permadeath. It's weird. So the premise is you are a young woman living in an efficiency, living in a a large city. I don't they the name of the city is like mentioned, but I don't quite recall it right now. And so the the your the the time you get to be her in the real world starts from seven o'clock in the evening to nine o'clock and between that time you get to go around to different places in the city and interact with different individuals and as you interact with them you get to uh you you increase your relationship with them and as you increase your relationship they unlock different things for you to use in your dreams like uh for example, one of them, one of the characters runs a record store, which is a very punk person. You know, it's they all have their own styles. And from getting the her first level with that person, you unlock a weapon that you can find in your dreams, or that you can make in the loadout screen before you go into your dreams. Okay. Okay. But anyway, you have so much time in the evening to go and hang out with people. And interact, go to different places and interact with people. But once you go back to your apartment and you go to sleep, you are put, you are brought into basically lucid dreaming. And you're playing the girl as like an action hero, running through what seems to be different, different like periods of her life. So, okay. the f- so just for example, the first, the first level is an old town like her her old town Mm -hmm. it's like a like a childhood area and it's not like a big open world it's procedural levels but like they're little squares that have portals attached to them that lead to other little squares and in these squares you can have anything from you know random encounters to you know that are bad guys or turrets or things that you destroy to puzzles that they're they're not really hard. The ones that I've seen have been like, you know, oh, co- like finish, connect the lines, or there's a Minesweeper one that I think is really nifty. <laughs> um, and once you get the puzzles right, they unlock a chest that you can go and they gives you weapon. Uh, you have basically magical attacks called lucid attacks. Mm-hmm. And they're they're basically magic, or your dodge, or uh, oh my goodness, heirlooms. I think is their um, their passive deals. Like they don't they don't have an active effect, but they, you know you pick them up and they do they give you buffs. They're like called... wearing necklaces and stuff in a lot of games. Yes, it's like it's like that, but they're called heirlooms, and they're and it's funny cuz they're they're like random things that you would find in your house like oh this is you know oh my goodness one of them is malware and it, <laughs> like it's they're just they're just like little things that you might find that you know to the average person it, it doesn't really seem like much but you know it 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 holds significance to your character okay when you said random things i immediately thought like toaster or, or like a vacuum See, my mind <laughs> well, like things you find in your house <laughs> well okay so like your your loadouts right are you have a melee weapon and you have a ranged weapon okay so your melee weapon can be anything from like basically earth bending which was one that i found i don't really care for terra surge but it's a weapon you can <laughs> use to a pool cue which is a weapon that you unlock through your relationships to the they call it the breaker sword, which is basically Cloud's sword from Final Fantasy. Yep. <laughs> uh, and then you have your ranged weapons, which are laser beam eyes or no. uh, kunai throwing knives 
or there's a super soaker in there. <laughs> it's they're just random little things that I, it's really cool and it has a really fun art style. I like it. It's it, it has I feel like a paper mache feel to it. Okay. And uh it's it's really fun. You you progress through the levels and every and at the once you find the boss of the level, it is basically an aspect of like I think the first one you fight is fear. And they're they're just the bosses of the different like stages. My my one gripe with this though is that and maybe it's because I haven't hit a decent enough milestone in the game to like have a lock spot. But unless you so whenever you finish a stage, whenever you finish it, you beat the boss, you wake up. And you mm-hmm. go through the you go through your your day life again, you go talk to your people, all that stuff, and then you go back to sleep and you start the next stage, which is not not your you know it's not the first level, and it moves you onto a different area, and you fight there. Things are things get harder, and then once I beat that one, you wake up. Repeat. If you die, in your dreams you you're like thrown awake it's like you know you had a you had a bad dream yeah yeah like you wake up with that feeling like you're falling kind of thing yes and and there there are downsides to that you get less time in the real world to go hang out with people and and yeah another side effect of that is that once you die you are bumped all the way back to the beginning and you have to do that entire sequence over again. But when, when well, when then that... that would kind of be like the permadeath, right? Yes, I... I'm pretty sure. Okay. I don't know. Well, but it's a bit when you, jarring. When you die, me. does it? Um, you, you mentioned that between each stage, you have the like the waking hours where you go and make the relationships. Do you lose the stuff you make in those in those waking hours when you die? Like if you go no, from stage you're... one to two, and you die in two, do you lose the stuff you got between one and two? No, it seems your waking hours are, they're permanent. They're, okay. They're, I, I, haven't, I haven't seen a way that those go away at all. Mm-hmm. However, your loadout throughout your playthrough stays with you. So like the weapons you find in your yeah. first stage will be with you in your second stage. The ones you pick up in the second stage will be with you in the third stage. When you die, you're reset. You get a random set of weapons when uh... you start again. Unless... Unless you go to your dream journal and you craft yourself better gear. And there are, like, crafting elements. Like, you can pick up, I think, Insight, Solace, Bliss. These are all crafting materials that you use to, funny enough, make real-world things that you can (laughs) give to people to increase your relationship with them faster. Because certain people like certain things. They have a whole, like, gift-giving mechanic, sort of like how Stardew Valley has, you know, people love certain things. Yeah. Certain certain people in the game love things, and if you give them the right things, they'll their relationship will go up faster. Are there dislikes? Ah, uh, So, like, you give, like, the I've record seen. store lady a, a hammer, and she's like, I don't like this. No, not, not that I've seen. I honestly haven't seen a way for you to lose relationship progression with anybody. Okay. So it's it's like a fail forward game. Like you're you're meant to not be able oh, to yeah. do this. You have to go over and over and build these relationships so that you Can unlock different things, right? Because you said mm-hmm. you could unlock things based on your relationships based with people. On, yes. Yeah. There is also a deal where based on your relationship with certain people, they have a you can activate a certain buff. There's one that I run with all the time that is uh, passive. Like they, it increases my critical damage. Mm-hmm. So, and I'm not even getting into the fighting. The fighting is a bit. <laughs> it's a bit janky. It's a bit weird. But it is an early access game, so I'm 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 willing to overlook that for like okay, it might be better in the future, hopefully. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But but it it, it does work. It's well. I mean, I would hope it works if it's on if it's already on Steam and you have to pay money for it. I mean, right? It does. It does work, and it is. It is 
I'm, I'm looking forward to what they have in the future for this game. Okay. Now, I, I've, I've got some questions. I've been thinking. So when, when, <laughs> when you mentioned the different stages about how it's like small squares, basically, are we talking like, think old school <clears throat> Zelda dungeon, you know, where like you're in a square and you move through a door and you're in another square and each square is a different is a different room. Is it like yes, that? It, it's that. Okay. Okay. So it's all it's just a bunch of random encounters. That's yes. really cool. And they're and they're all and they're spaced out differently every time you play through that level. Yeah. Okay. And then thinking about what Erica said, you, you said something about you, you said it was a fail forward game, right? Yeah. Is that? Yeah. Did you mean something like a uh, like back when I played Rogue Legacy? You know how it's like you you go and it's the game is designed mm-hmm. where there's no way you can beat it on your first run. You yeah. you have to keep dying and going over and over and over again so you can unlock upgrades and gear and stuff. Is it basically like that where you don't lose the stuff you've 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 upgraded, but you just have to kind of like reset back like you go back like a step, but you don't go back to the beginning when you die. Mm. Right? Is it kind of like that? I think I think it's kind of like that, but I do feel that there is a way to do very well your first try okay like rogue like rogue legacy is yeah your first character sucks <laughs> like y- you have to you have to play through the dungeon multiple times to mm-hmm. get gather the currency to make your character better in this one the currency is locked to your run it's sand i'm guessing you know like you're sand in your hourglass yeah so the sand sleeping man. Yeah. The same, yeah. Sl- sleep sand. Stuff. Sleep sands. Yeah. <laughs> sleep <laughs> sand <laughs> stuff. That, that just sounds like that just sounds like that chloroform. Anyway, um, but as you gather, like you can find shops and upgrade stations throughout the throughout the stage that you know you can buy better weapons, a better dodge, better spells. Uh, you can buy health health items or bombs that you need to unlock other stages because some of the doors are blocked by unbreakable objects that you only that you can only use your brain your brain bombs to <laughs> to blow up brain bombs. <laughs> yeah, and, there, and there's also things that are locked by keys. Like you have to go find a key to unlock this this part of the, the level. Mm-hmm. And it's, or sometimes you need a bomb and a key because you know the lock is blocked by an unbreakable object. So getting some real, getting some <laughs> it's real wild. Legend of Zelda vibes from that. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, it's it's really neat. The, uh, I like the I haven't seen that the bad guy progression. Uh, it doesn't get ridiculously hard. It's a slow burn. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like the first the first guys you fight. It's going to take you a bit to realize, like, okay, they have a defined move set, and, like, there is a parry, like, ability you can do. <laughs> it's it's pretty neat. I did have to rebind how the, uh, the ranged weapon works, because I couldn't figure out how the, how the keyboard binding for it was, so I, I bound it to my mouse. Yeah. For one of my mouse buttons. Okay. But, uh... But other than that, I haven't noticed any like te- any of the mechanical problems. But but it's once the baddies like as you move on through the levels, you do feel that the bad guys are harder and they hit harder. But you also have more health because the the the, the final heirloom that you gain from every level is basically a health buff. And it gives okay. you more health every time. Mm-hmm. It's it's the same heirloom every time. And so the next level, you you start with more health, and once you beat that level, you you get an heirloom that gives you more health to go to the next <laughs> one. And I'm guessing the next level is going to give me more health. <laughs> infinite but health. <laughs> infi- health ad infinitum. But but you do but you do start to notice that the bad guys are getting better that they're getting stronger and they're becoming different and it does make you keeps you on your toes about how you want to approach these fights but okay dreamscaper i think it's i think it is pretty it's pretty neat 
That actually sounds really awesome. I mean... Yeah, it sounds like something I really want to play. <laughs> I want to see what it looks like. <laughs> I was just saying, it, it does actually sound really cool. It, it, it sounds like it has a lot of elements from a bunch of games that I played and loved. So it's kind of mm-hmm. like, well, if you have this and this and this and they're all they're all awesome, then you put them together, it's got to be even greater, right? So. <laughs> oh, it says that it's a top-down action roguelite. Okay. I forgot to mention the like, top-down. Like, down a, like an isometric sort of thing, like, uh, like Diablo? Like Diablo, yeah. Okay. So sorry about the harsh cut, everybody. Our other footage for the Everdell portion of this uh, show was lost to the uh just the the bowels of nick's hard drive anyway (laughs) so we are we are re-recording this on a separate date and hopefully it's it's great so yeah everdell it's a nice little board game little worker placement board game correct if i do remember yeah so it's everdell by starling games um and yeah, it's a, a worker placement, and you play as a specific type of animal, like forest animal. So it's Spence. all taking place in a forest under this tree. And there's actually a really cute poem in the instructions about the tree and how we're all living under it and stuff. Um, <laughs> and the, the, the goal of the game is to just build the best civilization compared to all the other animals mm. under the tree. <laughs> I remember I played as a platypi, and I was the best. It was you wonderful. You lost! <laughs> Nobody needs to know that, Erica. I need to know it. <laughs> anyway, so... The winner does matter. Was pretty neat. The winner, I guess so. History <laughs> goes to the victor. Anyway, I thought it was pretty neat. It's a nice little work replacement resource management game. You have, what is it, three seasons? The game is split up into you technically start out in. four yeah because the very first because it's supposed to be every turn is it's, a season but yeah. the very start first out, turn is the, is end, the end of, of winter. winter yeah that's right second turn technically second turn is the is spring mm-hmm. then where you get a you get a, an additional worker put put into your worker pool to be placed out as mm-hmm. you know to go gather resources which is how you get resources is by uh, placing your workers. And uh, summer, you get two more workers, and then the final season, fall, you get another worker. I think you get more than that. I think it, like, it exponentially increases. So, like, in spring, you get one or two, and then summer, you get three. Because at the end of it, you have a lot of workers that you're trying to place. And that's something that, when we first started playing this game... We only had two workers, and we were very confused about, well, like, how are we supposed to build all these things mm-hmm. if we don't have enough workers to pull in the resources? Yes, and there are, well, and also when it comes to the, the places you get resources from, there are the main, like, the main ones that are always going to be part of the game board that are part of the meadow mm-hmm. area of, of slots that you can place your workers on and be like, oh, give me... Give me two fruit. Give me fruit and a card. Mm-hmm. That kind of thing. There's also the ones in the forest areas that change with every game. Yeah, because those ones, They're, I think they, they change depending upon the number of players you have, right? Because it was like little uh, um, little tiles it had you put there to be different. Mm-hmm. Yes. Because we only had it three, be- but I think the rules change if you have four. Yeah. Yeah, and there are certain spots, too, in in the forest where you can place your worker to get resources. And some of them, so some of them are scarce resources. So if one person takes that spot, no one else can take anything from that spot. And some of them you can, and there's some technical, like, differences if you have more players. So one that might be scarce in a three-player game you know, more than one person can take that resource in a four-player game, for example, just Mm -hmm. so that you have enough resources throughout the game. And I was wrong about the workers. You do get one for, uh, where was it? You get one for spring, one for summer, and then two in fall. Okay. So you you were closer. (laughs) I was very (laughs) wrong. (laughs) Hey, I'll take it as a win. (laughs) But, I mean, what? so our, our playthrough of it, I guess we were also... 
we had the uh, the problem of beginners beginners strife, I guess. Yeah. Didn't really know what we were doing. That but was I, one I feel like as Oh, sorry. As um, well, yeah, I know. I know the gripe how the rule book didn't help at all. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Zero, yeah, so zero assistance. It, it 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 was a bit. It didn't Vague. explain the meadow or the clearing or whatever it's called, the center of the board where you put. Oh, you put cards that you cards. can. Yeah. That you can take from the middle if you have the resources to to build them for right. yourself. But yeah, it didn't explain that very well. Yeah, uh, I, I felt it didn't like it explain did... changes of seasons very well, like what's like how that's supposed to work. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, because there was a whole process for end of season, like like there was a, yeah. a certain number of actions that needed to happen there at the end, and like it seemed like there were certain things that could, like people could keep playing once they Even... like once your workers were all used, you could still keep doing stuff as long as you had the resources to do it. Yeah, well, yes, because the, the buying like buying stuff from the meadow and building from your hand are not dependent on workers. Right, and so the it was the building stuff from your hand. So so I don't think we explained this, but the, the, I, like I said earlier, the, the goal is to build the best little civilization, and you have a board that has, I think it's 15 spaces for cards, yeah. And you mm-hmm. have to build cards in those spaces based on the resources that you get from the forest. And all of them are different. They do different things. They have different perks and bonuses. But you can only ever have 15 cards on, you know, your little village, I guess. I don't know. What's your, bingo, your bingo card. <laughs> yeah, and your bingo card. And yeah. there's there's like a, only a limited amount of ways to remove cards. Like you have to get other cards to remove cards that are already there and there's not a lot of those in the game um, yeah i guess something to note too we only played the base game there's a lot of expansions for this mm-hmm. and we only played the base game we but only, we did only play base yeah so so building these cards and putting them into your your little village you you could do that once you've already wasted all your workers once they're all spent and they've already you already built your resources you can still be playing cards as you're going through because i mean if you spent your workers to get resources you have the resources to play cards and yeah and then something that was different too is that certain cards like i said they had little perks based on you know it's a it's a store so at the beginning of every season except spring you can do this and i think that wasn't as clear as when when is the beginning of the season? Because some mm-hmm. people run out of moves to do earlier than others. So do they do their beginning of season right then and there when they're done with it? Or do we wait until everyone's done with the seasons? Because there's also op- uh, like there was also an option to pull cards from the meadow. And do you do that as soon as you're done? with all your moves? Or do you wait? Like, And that can have a difference in the game because if someone else pulls the card before everyone's done you know it it was a bit weird as far as the timing of some of the stuff yeah the rule book was very vague to a point of being unhelpful <laughs> <laughs> and well and also on top of like the the idea that you can play things without having the resources to do it or without having workers rather but you can also do it without having the resources to do it. If certain cards unlock other mm-hmm. cards, seven really seven wonders style. Yeah. It's like you know, if you have the farm already played, you can you can use that to buy one of the creatures that yeah, like the husband that you and the you can wife. put onto it. Yeah. yeah, the husband and the wife. And you could only you, do one per yeah, one per farm per yeah farm. <laughs> that so. was another thing that we forgot to explain was that when you're building things on your bingo card it's two different types of things you could do you could either build construction uh, structures with it i think the cards called them constructions um yeah. or um, critters and critters were different types of animals that provided a benefit that was different than the buildings but it was still a, a interesting benefit and it was seemed like um, having the critters didn't get you a building having the building would get you a critter like I think the yes, one that I did was I built the courthouse, and that let me get the judge, who was like a turtle or something like that. Um, 
but, uh, straight. But um, what else? Yeah, and then there's also, I guess, like in any game, like there's there's, there's also objective items that only one person can get so like if you're the first one to have three of a certain type of card you can get this like feat type of thing and Mm -hmm. And it's worth victory points at the end yeah and they're worth victory points it seemed to me like some of the feats were a lot harder to get than the other ones because there is one type of card well and those are the ones also that change from game to game you pull there were the pool. there were two different types of things too. Like there was there was like the generic like achievement ones where get four of the green cards and you get like the market and the market is four victory points. But then there yeah. was like the more advanced ones that it was like if you have the monastery and a monk and two blue buildings, then you can take yeah, this and this. get six victory points. It's like it was like well that's a really random combo of crap. Like you have to get lucky mm-hmm. to make sure you get so- that combo. Some of the combos were hard to get. The, I know. I was so annoyed. I had everything set up, and I was going to take one card from the meadow on my turn and to get one of the combos, and then Nick just stole it and didn't <laughs> even get the combo for it. He just took it. And I I mean, I won anyway, so I don't care. But well, yeah, of course you did. <laughs> I anyway. could have won by more. <laughs> Whatever. But still, what? I'm pretty sure I took that card because I needed it for something. I didn't need it for the combo. I needed it for a sure. critter or something. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah. Look, yeah, I was course, not playing course. like our brother. All right, where I'm like <laughs> counting her cards, being like, "Well, if I take this, I can sabotage her play." No, I wasn't okay, doing that. All right. He's a meta player. I'm not. Right. I'm not that smart. I can't. I can't think that and far he's, ahead. He's a meta player, and he's really good at it. Okay. <laughs> Say, I have enough trouble but. cooking up plans for my own bingo card that i'm not paying attention to everyone else's bingo card all right yeah but if we had give if we had been able to do more like playthroughs of it mm-hmm. i feel like it would have gone well of course it would have gone smoother we would have known what we were <laughs> doing well because it took us what but, probably a good hour to hour and a half to play yeah but the box itself says this game should should take 20 minutes for experienced players and i was like wow we uh, we were not experienced players. Well, I think that that's for different reasons, right? Like, we didn't play in person. We played on Tabletop Sim, which that mm-hmm. itself takes a little bit to get used yeah, to. And I was different. having computer issues, so <laughs> that just, like, added to it. But it, yeah. it, it also just, like, not having the stuff in front of you. It's It's still, like, even though you can see it on the table, it's still hard to wrap your head around what's going on on the board when you're playing a Tabletop Sim versus in real life. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it was still a neat. It's a neat game. Mm-hmm. Given more time, it would probably we would probably be. It would be better. Still, the fact that the uh, the rule book is vague made it very difficult. Mm-hmm. Even for like, even no matter how experienced we were. Yeah, the, the like instructions could have been the, clearer. As far as spelling out the way things are supposed to work. But Mm -hmm. as far as like the negatives versus the positives, I would definitely say this game has a lot more positives. Like, like, yeah, I know we played on tabletop simulator, but it seems like this game has some amazing table presence because like when you open the box, like you, you build this little cardboard tree that is the Everdell tree. And that's Mm -hmm. where the deck of cards goes. And everything is like either under the tree or up in the boughs of the tree. So like this thing is like standing off your table, like, probably a good 10 to 12 inches you know and it that just it looks cool style. yeah and the art the, style is the, great the art style is wonderful mm-hmm. yeah and they did a fantastic just, job with the, the the personification i hope i did that right word of the of the animals you know yeah there you go so it was really great yes, it was it was a really neat game rule book sucked <laughs> <laughs> i actually and, i'm looking through the rule book now and it actually does tell us when we're supposed to refill the meadow (laughs) so what you're saying is at the time because we were like going through like we skimmed it before we played (laughs) yeah it was one of those like while you're playing you're just like flipping through the rule book can we go back and redact our previous statement where it's like (laughs) apparently the instructions are great the issue it was a user it was user error and that's As something too that it, it's a thing where if you don't like it's it's easier to have the physical rule book with you right you're playing let me just look at it real quick 
oh, it says this, and you don't have to alt-tab away from tabletop sims to go read it, because it actually says, like, if a metal card is played, immediately replace it with a new card from the draw pile. And we were very confused as far as, well, I don't know how when to read. do we refill the, the meadow? And... <laughs> hey, that college education's really paying off for you, Jake. <laughs> I can't read, Erica. <laughs> But, anyway, but honestly, ten out of ten. I really <laughs> love this game, and it's it's on my list. I, I'm gonna buy it probably post Christmas because all my money went to Christmas gifts. Um, nice. So in the what new year, I'm definitely gonna buy this game because I think you know our brother and all of our because our family has totally tur- turned into a board game group, and I, I really like Slowly. that. I, I think everybody would get a kick out of this one, just because it was, it was like neat. you compared it to Seven Wonders, and I know our brother loved seven wonders oh yeah and so this would totally be up his alley he might he might have to get over the cuteness of the animals and stuff like that but but he He'll can he can deal with that it's no axis and allies and it's no uh oh my star goodness. wars the what's the star wars one he loves rebellion uh rebellion he has, a, no knack. He has a knack for finding table table, table hog games that take but like not only do they oh. hog your table they hog your time they take day. Like I love Star Wars Rebellion, but by golly, it it takes a good four to eight hours to to play through that, and that's and if always... and that's if you know exactly what's going on and all that. But we always play it so sporadically that I'm like, refresh me on the rules again. How does this work? I mean, yep. so but compared compared to those games, it's supposed to be a, a short little quick quick thing yeah. i and guess everything I is short comparatively especially like the first round we you don't have a lot of workers to place it's just about picking up resources as fast as you can yeah and mm-hmm. then as you go from that you already have your cards in your hand as far as and you're as far as like what you can build and you have an idea of what kind of thing you're working towards and yeah you get one additional worker per round it's, it's not that bad like it's it's quick as far as getting the the workers out there and getting through it i can see this going really fast once you get into the group yeah i would compare it a lot to like us playing castles of burgundy like you remember the first couple times we played it took us a while but now we're like streamlined in that game like we all know what to do we all know where things need to get set up so it was everything runs smoothly it was no dragoon where y'all played it wrong for the first time and then realized after the fact that y'all played it wrong that wasn't Dragoon. That was uh, that was that was it? Burgundy. It was Burgundy. So you you played Dragoon with us the first oh. time we played. I did. I played Burgundy wrong with y'all. Yes, yeah, so we, we we all botched <laughs> Burgundy the first time. We all botched yeah. Burgundy. Burgundy was fun. Though. The Burgundy's Burgundy great. Really Definitely still in my top games. I love I love but, Burgundy. <laughs> but Everdell Everdell has given given more time in this in our little group of mm-hmm. of board gamers. Uh, it, I feel like it could be really good. Yeah, it's definitely great. Big, uh, big box. Like I said, da- great table presence. Uh, I actually kind of I want to try out some of the expansions if we ever get a chance. Oh yes, mm-hmm. I want because I think it's got like six of them, right? Like it's got a lot. There's a lot the, of expansion. Yeah, the tabletop sim. When we loaded it, it was like, which of these expansions do you want to add? And it was like a full screen practically of expansions. <laughs> it's like, oh god. <laughs> but, but yeah, None, thank you. But it definitely yeah. is awesome. Like I said, I would recommend. Um, yeah. So yeah, we uh, discussed our video games. We discussed uh, Everdell, and I think that's about it. Am I right, Nick? Yeah, that seems about it. I guess we'll uh, see you all next week. Cool. All right. Bye, y'all. Bye. Bye. Bye.